Hello. Hiya, Jan. Right, just to let all my uh, subscribers know, we're, we're joined today by Jan Cunliffe, who is the co-founder of Jengba. Jengba stands in for Joint Enterprise Not Guilty by Association. So thank you for your time, Jan. You're welcome. Right, the first question is, so what is Joint Enterprise for those that don't know? Uh, joint Enterprise is a legal principle. It's not, it's not set down in legislation, but it's used in, um, usually very often in cases of murder. So um, rather than sort of charge the culprit, the perpetrator, on his own, um, if you bring in others, you, the others, whether they participated in the crime or not, can still be found guilty uh, of murder, regardless of uh, whether they uh, laid a finger on the victim or not. Right. Um, how was joint enterprise? How has joint enterprise, sorry, affected you and your life? Um, I know about it because um, because uh, we, we, my son was uh, convicted of a joint enterprise murder back in 2008. So by sitting through the whole trial process, um, I, I thought this was a murder charge, and they took five five young people, charged them all with murder. I thought it was about uh, finding out what had ha actually happened. Uh, why it had happened, how it had happened, and who was the uh, perpetrator. So I, I went into that situation believing that, okay, you know, these kids have to be held on remand and they have to go through a trial process, but at the end of it, we'd get truth and we'd get justice and it would be played out in the courtroom so that no one could argue whether it was right or wrong. Uh, but my experience proved that it wasn't about finding the truth or the justice or who'd done uh, the murder and how it had happened, it was about getting as many people found guilty for that single offence as, as was possible. And the evidence used as well, um, well, if there was any evidence, I, I just couldn't believe. Um, it was more about sort of circumstantial evidence and speculation and possibilities of foresight and that kind of thing. So after, hit, after sitting in a trial process like that, I just came away um, realising that British justice just doesn't, doesn't exist. Right. Um, what does join? What does Jengba stand for? Obviously, I, I've sort of covered it at the beginning, haven't I? But I'll let you break yeah. it down. Well, joint enterprise not guilty by association. I mean, we use the word not because we, we you know, you, you shouldn't be found guilty simply by association because all of, you know, humans are social creatures. So, um, if you, you know, we all sort of communicate and, and socialise together. So if one of, one of our friends or someone that we know or who we are associated with, if they break the law, then I'm sorry, but I'm not guilty by my association to you. However, the courts at the moment seem to think that I would be. So if I went, if, you know, I went into the shop with you um, and I was buying some shopping and you stole something and when we come outside if I was arrested and charged with shoplifting just because you did uh, that would be wrong but but that could happen because they could say well I'm associated with you and I should have had the foresight or the knowledge that you may shoplift not that you are going to not that you're going to tell me that that you're going to do that I should have somehow had some psychic power to know that you were going to do that and my association is enough to prove that. Yep. Uh, when was Jengba founded? Um, I would say I would say the day of my son's conviction because when I walked out of the courtroom, I just knew something had to be done um, because I'd seen everything that was wrong. But the actual campaign itself, uh, we had the, it, look, we launched. I think it was 2010. Um, but prior to that, we were sort of building a bit of a campaign anyway, but we just didn't have a name and we didn't have uh, a website and we didn't have um, anything in place. But the real launch was in 2010. Right. Uh, approximately how many people are in prison due to being convicted or remanded on joint enterprise? Do you have a rough like figure number? Well, we, we, we believe it's thousands. I mean, it's very, very difficult to get the Ministry of Justice to, to sort of divulge how many people there are. They say that they don't have the figures, which is sort of a bit of a nonsense. You, you think that you think that the government would know how many people they're convicting. Uh, but we we support um, we support nearly 900 people who are maintaining their innocence who've actually got in touch with us uh, but we believe it, it must be thousands does that extend to obviously prisoners families as well for those that are, like have been like convicted um, on remanded or on joint enterprise well the ones that we support are all you know basically most of them are serving life sentences for murder so we've got nearly 900 like that so we've got 900 uh, serving prisoners uh, and, and we support their families as well so we've probably got a sort of um, 
submissions of, of, of thousands of people up and down the country who now understand what's happened to their loved one and, and people in prison. But a lot of people in prison still don't understand why they've been convicted as well. So sometimes we get, in, you know, we get contact from people who've been in prison for several years and only just realise, they, they know in, to themselves that they haven't killed anyone, but they just don't realise that there's anything they can do. Uh, and then they find, you know, another prisoner might say, oh, joint enterprise, this is what it is, get your parents or, you know, your wife, your girlfriend to contact Jenga. And a lot of, a lot of the, uh, people come to us because of, because of that, because someone else has told them who we are and seen that, you know, the person that they're talking to um, doesn't understand their own conviction. It's, it sounds like you're quite frustrated that obviously people are not aware of Jengba and like I say they're serving years that, of their sentence having been convicted on this travesty what, which is joint enterprise before they're actually contacting yourselves is that quite frustrating for yourself? It is, it's very frustrating because I, I mean it's frustrating because I didn't know what joint enterprise was I thought I thought you know I thought my son was being charged with murder because he'd murdered someone uh, and I thought we were going to prove that he hadn't um, the word, the phrase of joint enterprise came up during the trial um, and it was like, I tried to Google it and I, when I Googled it, it didn't exist. It was a sort of hip replacement surgery um, surgeon somewhere in Australia um, and I couldn't find it. I didn't know it was a legal principle, a legal doctrine. I don't think people in this country do know. It's just a sneaky way. Uh, I call it a sneaky technicality on the prosecution, in the prosecution's favour. And if it, was a, if it was a technicality on a defendant's favour, I know for a fact it would have been tightened years ago. But because it's sort of uh, allowing uh, prosecutors to sort of get away with putting innocent people in, pre in prison, it's been like, like, like run right. Like it just, just runs right up and down the country. And I would say basically probably at least once a month someone's getting convicted of, of a very serious offence who, who hasn't committed it or, but on the basis of someone else that they know. What is the aim of Jengba? Uh, well, we would, I, I personally would like um, the courts to actually use evidence, real evidence, not evidence of foresight or evidence of association um, or, or gang narratives as well. I'd like them to use evidence, forensic evidence, CCTV footage, fingerprints, blood spatter, uh, DNA, that kind of thing. You know, this kind of thing that people think um, is used in a murder trial? I'd like them to use that. I, I don't think you have to use uh, a sneaky little principle to get convictions. You should be using evidence. So for me, I would, I would um, abolish joint enterprise and, and go back to the old-fashioned way of proving intent. What's and, the mission going that, to Prove intent, and, you know, prove intent that someone intended to murder. Uh, because that, that, that's, that's what our, our legal system is made up of. You know, you can't go to prison unless you intend to murder. But when you put joint enterprise into the equation, uh, the perpetrator, ha they have to prove intent that the perpetrator did intend for the secondary party. It's a le lesser burden of proof. Uh, so that's not, that's not balanced. You know, so, you know, a perpetrator gets more fairly, fairly treated than a secondary party who is an innocent person, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Uh, roughly, how many people, prisoners, families of people convicted on joint enterprise are you and Jengba currently supporting, roughly? Well, well we, we're currently supporting that over, well, roughly 900 prisoners have contacted us. So we send out, uh, try to send out a monthly newsletter every month, and that sort of comes, comes to about eight, uh, eight to 900. Uh, but we've got sort of thousands of people who, who come to us and have a friend or a loved one that's in prison. And, but it's, it's not enough because we know there's a lot more out there. You, you just have nowhere, no one and nowhere to turn to and they don't understand. All they know is the frustration that something's gone wrong, but they just can't understand what it is. Is there a charge for Jengba's advice, help and support? No, we're, yet, we're a non-funded organisation. <clears throat> we're not a charity, but we do take donations from, from people if they, they, they can afford it. But uh, uh, all of us are volunteers. We work from home and we, we do everything ourselves. And, it's, you know, none of us get paid. Um, we do it because it's the right thing to do. Is, there, is it like, so is it, is it local? Is it an area? Is it national? Is there, is there any areas you won't cover? Or is it literally you guys are travelling up the length and breadth of this country? Uh, let, helping let, people, supporting people. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, if there's a prisoner who if there's a prisoner who contacts us and they desperately need one of us to go visit them, then we will do, and we have done that. Um, we are a national campaign. Our office is based in London, uh, but I'm based in the northwest, so we've got the London office, and I sort of sort of take charge of this side of the country because it's much easier. 
for me to go to Manchester or Liverpool or wherever I need to go. Uh, and the families down south, they, they take care of that area. But I'm I'm always open to go anywhere because as as a co-founder, um, with m- myself and Gloria Morrison, feel that we have to be the spokespeople for the campaign. And if someone wants to see one of us, then we're more than happy to do that. Do you and Jengba have any support from MPs or public figures or anything like that? Um, we're, one of our patrons is Lord Usley, so uh, we got him pretty early on, and uh, Jeremy Corbyn's always supported us. He got us um, our first um, select committee inquiries on joint enterprise, and since then we've built a, a good, strong support and network of MPs. We've got, um, well, we had at least 16 that opened the first ever debate in Parliament on joint enterprise, and that was in January this year. And we're sort of in constant communication with at the moment, trying to work out where we go with this. And the MPs that we've got, um, I mean, Andrew, we've got Andrew Mitchell and we've got Lucy Powell who have taken the lead. So we've got a Labour and a Conservative. So we're a cross party. It's a cross party issue. And we've got, you know, sort of members, members of Parliament from both sides all saying that they believe it's wrong and they do want to help us. Um, I mean, when we when they had the debate in January, some of the MPs, that the way that they debated, it was very, very strong. They said, you know, why is there not enough MPs in here sort of taking a stand against this? Uh, and one of the MPs even said a day in prison for an innocent person is a day too long. And we've got people doing life sentences as long as 34 years. Uh, so it, 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 it is a, it is, it's a stain on British justice, this joint enterprise. And, you know, we've now got MPs who are recognising that and using our words and our voices to do, you know, the right thing in the House of Commons. Um, so what do you think needs to happen to joint enterprise uh, as a... I, obviously, what do you think needs to happen to it in general? Well, the Supreme Court in uh, 2016 acknowledged that the law had taken a wrong turn for 32 years. So there was 32 years of injustice. So the law was being misapplied wrongly for all of that time. So one of the things that we want is all the cases, anyone, you know, from 1984 to 2016 who was convicted of a joint enterprise, particularly murder, because that leaves you with a life sentence, should have their cases reviewed. And if they are a secondary party and guilty of something else, then that should be what they're found guilty of and not the murder. So we want a big inquiry into that, uh, and not an inquiry that takes 12 years either. We want it to, be, to happen as soon as possible, because we know that the amount of prisons that we've got, if they were all to go through the natural appeal process, it would take it would probably take a thousand years for that to happen. It's got to be a big inquiry with lots of cases all being seen at the same time uh, and justice being served. So that's one of the things that I think we need to do. But we also need to recognise that even though that um, injustice was acknowledged, there are still a lot of things wrong with joint enterprise. And whether it's put in legislation or not, it, you know, that's going to be up to up to the sort of people who've got better legal minds than me. But at the moment, I still believe the law is wrong and it's still being abused by the CPS. And it does need to be tightened so that nobody, nobody who is innocent ever gets drawn into it. If people need, because I've been contacted myself by subscribers and stuff on my channel. Uh, if people need yours and Jengba's help, advice, what's the best way to contact yourselves? Uh, well, we've got a website. You can look at the website. Um, we've got an email address on there. It's jointenterpriseinfo at gmail.com. So if you send us an email, we'll, we'll get back to you. And there's also two phone numbers on there. Uh, one of them is the phone number that I will answer, one of them that Gloria Morrison could answer. And we've also got an office telephone number. So if there's no one in the office or you can't get through to us, you can leave a message on there. But we can guarantee if you write to us or telephone us or send us an email, we will always respond. We don't always have the answers, uh, but we'll do our best. And, you know, uh, it, for, for, from my point of view, it's better to come to us before conviction uh, because um, – it's too late. Once convicted, it's too late. And obviously, we can't offer you legal advice, but we can we can give you options and we can sign post you to the right QCs and barristers, people who have fought joint enterprise cases and won, rather than going to someone who's never done it before uh, or, or doesn't actually understand the complexities. Because it's a really complex area of law, and if you don't get the right person to defend you during the trial process, then unfortunately you, you're at the mercy of the jury. And the jurors, I don't believe, understand um, 
the, the gravity of finding someone someone guilty of a joint enterprise murder. I don't think they realise that when that happens, that person then gets a life sentence to go with it. So, so the message that you're sending out is the sooner you contact Jengba, the better. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And even if you've not been affected, you know, look at our website. Uh, look, you know, join us in our tweets. And, and most importantly, we've got a petition on there <clears throat> asking that there is an inquiry after since the Supreme Court judgment, asking for people's cases that could have been wrong need to be looked at. So we need to get the signatures on there. So, you know, even if you've never been affected, but you actually care about other people, sign that petition. And the sooner it gets the numbers up, the sooner we can take it back to Downing Street. How many signatures has that currently got? Have you any idea? Um, we've we've okay. probably got just over 2,000, but um, in order to take something to, to Downing Street into Parliament, well, we can take 10,000 and that, you know, yeah. you can knock on the door with 10,000. And I think 10,000 would be enough for us uh, because we've already, you know, the door's already slightly ajar. We just need to sort of push it a little bit further. And I think 10,000 would take us that little bit further. I'll ask my subscribers as well, guys. Please check out Jengba's website. What I'll do, I'll put a link in the description below. I'll put their uh, Facebook, their Twitter handles, uh, one for Jan, one for Jengba. Um, the website, Jan, as well. What's the website? www. Uh, jointenterprise.co right guys on that note I will thank Jan for her time uh, very grateful guys like comment subscribe and I'll speak to you all soon thank you Jan for your time and I'll speak to you again